Okay, so uh, oops. let's start. So some of humanity's most beautiful cities were built on uh, geographical, topographical obstacles um, next to cliffs or valleys or bays or rivers. And it makes a lot of sense if you're a knight building a castle. It makes less sense if you're just trying to get to work and it's 2018. So I'm going to go through the infrastructure we've invented to, to get over those obstacles. Um, and city builders have been quite creative and inventive. And because they're very expensive, we tend to only build them where it makes a lot of sense. And so because of that significant, mappers tend to map them well. Unfortunately, um, routers tend not to really understand the advantage it could give to pedestrians and either ignore them or do not handle them uh, as well as they could. Um, and as you'll see, it can be easier in, in some cases and less easy in other cases. So a, a very quick refresher on how routing works. You take your OSM database, you boil it down to uh, the things you can walk over, which uh, I've represented as, as green and blue here. And then um, you assign a score to every edge of, of your network. And then to get from, from work to school, you are uh, you simply, well, simply, you find out the, the, the path that would have the lowest score. Uh, and, um, well, how do you assign the scores? That, well, that uh, is uh, not always easy for pedestrians. Do you, want, uh, do you want to spend less time? Do you want to spend less energy? Do you want to spend less money? So uh, routing engine authors uh, usually strike a compromise between all of the different factors, and which this is also why you get different, uh, different results from different engines. The, a very common one is ferries, and uh, routing engines tend to handle them quite well. We have more than 20,000 in the database, and the one that interests us for pedestrians are uh, mostly the short ones, uh, like typically less than two kilometers that go uh, over a river or over a lake. And this one crosses the harbor in Hamburg in Germany, and it carries more than nine million passengers a year. So quite significant. And how do you map them? It's really easy. You connect your road network on both sides um, with uh, a way that you tag as route equals ferry. Uh, and if you have more than one point, you uh, have the terminals ma ma mapped as a ferry terminal. Um, almost every, uh, all the other routing engines I've seen, uh, they can understand ferries and they, they deal with them quite well. And I think we can adapt the, the routing engine profile so that the unsupported um, modes of transportation are handled a bit like ferries. For example, this one, that's extremely rare. Uh, there are 12 uh, transporter bridges uh, over the world. And so you build a toll bridge over typically a harbor, and then you have, I don't know if you can see it. Does that mouse? No. Uh, here, you've got this uh, platform that is being pulled across back and forth over the bridge. And um, this one is near Bilbao in Spain. And it saves you a 10 kilometer detour if you had to go up the harbor, take the ferry, and go back. Um, it runs 24 7 and it costs 35 cents for a pedestrian. And is it a ferry, a flying ferry? Not really. It's a, it's a transporter bridge. Um, but people have um, tagged some of those bridges as ferries because it, it tends to do what we want it to do for, for the routing. So uh, there's one in Middlesbrough in England that is tagged as a ferry. Is it correct? Not really. Um, other people have tagged them as, as highway equals footway or service or path. Doesn't, does, it makes sense if you want to route over it, but it's tagging for the renderer. 
So I think that uh, routers and renderers should understand this tagging of, of bridge movable equals transporter on a bridge equals movable and just treat it as a fairy synonym and that would work well enough. Uh, a way more common one, um, piece of infrastructure, and it's also mapped uh, in a similar way. You just have a way, and it's um, it's escalators and travelators. I thought they were just like for airport terminals. You have those long uh, travelators, um, but this one in in uh, Hong Kong is is a very important piece of pedestrian navigation. Some cities use them as uh, it, as outdoors uh, pieces of infrastructure. And so if you want to do it properly in Hong Kong, you have to understand the, this one, this uh, called the Central Mid-Levels Escalators, and they carry 80,000 passengers a day. Um, and so if the conveying tag is present on a, on a highway, um, you, if you're a routing engine, you should um, understand that maybe people are going to move a bit faster and maybe set a score that's a bit lower because you can just stand there and move. And um, some routing engine and sign a, a penalty if you go over steps, but I don't think you should have a penalty if the steps are moving you up. Um, and, and like that, you should also show uh, on, on the navigation, you know, take the elevator or take, take the... Um, take the steps, moving steps, take the moving footway. Another very common piece of infrastructure, um, and I, I've just used tag info for the counts, I don't know how many are inside, outside, but we've got more than 17,000 uh, lifts, and the tagging is very simple. You, um, you have the node and you tag it as uh, highway equals elevator. And routing, uh, you could, if you do it naively and just ignore that tag, you might get it right because it's usually a very short way. Instead of having to go up and down, um, you take the shortest way and that usually gets you there. But the problem with that is uh, you might um, get the time wrong because um, you have to wait for the lift and lift takes some time to get you up or down. And uh, it would also miss the advantage of um, sometimes you, it makes sense to take the lift down and then go back up a bit, or go back down a bit and then take the lift up and then go back down a bit again to use less energy. And it might be a bit longer in kilometers, but it might be a lot quicker. Um, and this one is, Lux is in Luxembourg, where I'm from. And uh, you can see that we um, dug like a niche into the hill. This used to be the hill. So we dug into it. And then there's this huge pillar, concrete pillar. And the lift goes up and down alongside it. And there's a bridge at the top um, that connects the top of the lift to the park. And uh, I was... Um, bugging Richard, who's over there, because uh, this didn't work in, in cycle.travel, his, his uh, cycling routing, and uh, I, I couldn't understand why. And it turns out that um, his, his routing engine was uh, too clever by half, and it, uh, it understood that this was all connected, uh, but it looked at the elevation and uh, the, the elevation model just had a big cliff there, and it didn't know that it had been dug into it. So um, adding, the, um, adding the incline, uh, that the model understood that the lift was not halfway up on the hill, but was at the bottom of the hill, and then it made sense to the engine. Um, what, the, what the engine did correctly assume was that the bridge at the top was uh, straight. Um, you sometimes see routing engines, uh, they, um, they think, oh yes, I'm going to use the elevation model, and then they just follow it on sticking to the ground, and so you have, in the view of that model, you have a bridge going down the cliff, following the bottom of the valley, and then going back up the cliff. So routing engines need to understand that bridges are usually straight, uh, not always flat, but straight. Um, 
unless you have an incline tag on it. Um, I, I would tag it with an incline tag if it has, um, like in New York, you have bridges that go up and down so that ships can't go underneath them. Um, a difficult one is uh, funiculars. Um, uh, can we have a show of hands of who was at the public transport tagging talk uh, this morning? Yeah, a few. Uh, so uh, the, the, the tagging is, uh, is difficult to, to, uh, to work with. And uh, people have tagged uh, funiculars using that, that schema. So you have, uh, I've got the red dot there, that's tagged as a stop position. And the two arrows, uh, the one in the middle between the track, people get onto the train. And the one on the left there, people get off the train. So uh, the one in the middle is tagged as platform entry only. And the one on the, on the left is uh, tagged as exit only. So um, it's not always connected to the road network either, the, the platform. So you need to... Uh, invent ways, virtual ways, that um, create virtual connections between the, the stop position in the middle and the platform, and on the other side of the platform to the, uh, from the nearest platform to the nearest point on the, on the highway, which I've just represented as a, as a line over there. Um, and then uh, once we have that, we can uh, navigate the pedestrians on, on those virtual ways from the, from the highway network to the platform, from there to the stop position where they are on the train. We can treat the train as a ferry and do the same again on the other side. Um, and uh, we can also apply this to people movers, like you might have taken them from, from one airport terminal to the other. They tend to be tagged in a similar way. There's one here in Milan that takes you from, uh, from a metro station to a hospital. So they, they appear all over the place, and they're really useful when, when uh, going around. Um, and the, there's another way of tagging those. Of course, it'd be too easy if we just had one way. Uh, people have tagged them as highway equals elevator and connecting that to the road network. And so this we can just, just treat as a ferry. Um, there's uh, when, when tagging structure tends to be used for funiculars and the others for incline elevators, I had no idea what the difference was. Uh, funiculars tend to use two cabins and one as a counterweight. And this is an incline elevators because the cabins are independent. They each have their own counterweight. As far as I understand, this is the difference. Uh, it makes uh, little difference when you use them, though we have different tagging schemas for them. Um, and this one is actually an incline elevator, but people call it the funicular in Montmartre in Paris. And it carries um, around 4 million passengers per year. And when it closed, it closed for a few months in 2006, 2007. Shopkeepers complained that uh, that the income was down 20, 30 percent. So it's really important to that part of, of Paris, and you have to get it right if you want to do pedestrian navigation in Paris. Uh, we've also mapped aerial ways in, uh, different, in different ways, uh, also by tagging the, the ends as uh, nodes or, or buildings and using something that is almost but not entirely unlike uh, the public transport v2 schema so that, that would be too easy um, and we can easily treat them um, from from cable cars like this or gondolas that are smaller um, and they do tend to be used in cities this one is in in new york and there's one in london and i'm sure there's many others um, so we can easily treat them as funiculars as well. It doesn't matter if you're on a rail or on a cable. So we connect to them like a funicular, and then the thing itself we treat as a ferry. Um, and on the on the user interface is is just a, a, a mock-up. Um, 
we should let the users decide. Do you want to? Do you want to use the? Uh, do you want to? If it costs you something, uh, most most ferries cost something. Most uh, lifts do not cost anything. Uh, but we should let the users decide if it's worth it or not, and let users decide what they um, what they want to navigate on. Uh, it would be especially important if you're in a wheelchair. Uh, to have this kind of uh, of navigation option. Um, that's it. It was a short talk, uh, but uh, thank you, and I'll take your questions. So, um, firstly, I think very, very interesting uh, talk, actually. Uh, I work on some parts of routing, but more traditional, like just car, like et cetera, routing. Yeah, so, yeah, we tend to to do cars, and I think, oh yes, we've solved the problem. Uh, so, uh, so just curious, like all this work that you've done, uh, maybe I missed this, but like, is this available in some pedestrian router? Uh, all this work that you described, like I know you you mentioned no. that you, you know we've been doing this, et cetera. Like I'm just curious. Like, is this available somewhere for us to try out ourselves? So it's not available to try out because I'm not sure this is the right way of doing it, which is why I'm, I'm talking about it. And I, I'm hoping some people will come up in the audience and say, you're doing this the wrong way. You've misunderstood the whole thing. You should be doing it this way. Uh, so it's not available yet. Uh, some stuff would be quite easy to, to add um, to, to the routers, like the, the transporter bridges. That's just a few tags to add to the profile. Uh, for the funiculars to have the virtual connections while you're pre-processing the model, I would have no idea where to start in the, in the most common routing engines. And uh, just an extension of this question, so for pedestrian routing, um, is there any like OSM-based open source router that you would recommend that, like for us to, let's say, try to do some of these extensions ourselves? Or like maybe what, just for pedestrian I... routing in general, hmm. what engine do you recommend to try? Um, well, the, the, the most common ones uh, uh, seem to be Graphhopper and uh, OSRM. Mm -hmm. um, there is a nice talk by Frederick Gramm, are you there, Fred? Uh, who uh, compared all those different engines and says, oh, this is good for this, this is good for that. Uh, there is Valhalla, uh, and I don't know, people are still working on it. Uh, people at Madzen were doing that, uh, it seemed interesting. Um, and there's a few other smaller ones, uh, but yeah, uh, OSRM and Graphhopper are, are the two big ones. Um, I'm also doing a routing engine, and I'm also doing a ferry routing. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, I'm also doing a routing engine, and yeah. I'm also doing ferry routing. Yeah. But, um, my question is, do you know that there is a fundamental difference between a ferry and a moving pavement? Because uh, in an A-star A -star router, you have a routing constraint which, needs, which says you need some sort of maximum speed. Otherwise, A-star cannot be efficient. And this is no problem for a ferry, because a ferry does not make you a high speed uh, in the routing. But if you want to in include a moving pavement, then you want to get the effect of the high speed, and then you have a problem with this R star constraint, and um, you lose much performance in the your routing algorithm. Um, so this is why I think there is a fundamental difference between the ferry and the moving pavement, because the moving pavement, this is more or less uh, public transport routing. It's more or less, sorry? This is public transport routing, which is a different problem. Hmm. Um. So I, I, I see that it could be on, on the on the border. Uh, you know, is is uh, is a uh, there is one uh, moving pavement tagged with V equals yes close to Moscow. I have no idea if this is true or if it's a mistake. Uh, there are funiculars that are free. Uh, there are lifts that are free. Um, do do uh, is is it all? Do, do I care as a pedestrian uh, if I'm going from A to B? Uh, if um, 
if my routing engine has to look at it in some way or another. Um, I, I do see that um, if you were going to, to look at public transport and you say, I'm going to do a public transport router, and then you need to handle all the lines, and you can get off at more than one stop, and uh, you need to handle the, the schedules, uh, then, that, then that's one thing. But a ferry that would move all the time, or um, an, a stairs that go up 24-7 would, for me, as a pedestrian, be definitely in another category. I'm not sure I, I made the, I'm, I'm not sure we can, um, I understand the difficulty you're describing, that it's a completely different bag of beans if you're looking at, at a ferry where speed doesn't matter and a, and a moving walkway where the speed does matter. Yeah, that's it. It's just that um, the, the routing uh, engineers does not just uh, misunderstand the text, but there's also a fundamental algorithmic problem in doing mm -hmm. it. Could you, could you see another way of, of solving it? Could, sorry, could you see another way of solving it than, than this? To, to understand as a routing engine moving walkways or, or, or things like that? Yeah, of course you cannot do it the same way as public transport routing. It's just um, <clears throat> something that needs more computing power. Okay. And you cannot do it on a mobile, for example. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to ask a fairly similar question, uh, which was to what extent is this a special case of um, public transport routing? Uh, you yeah. mentioned a couple of times the public transport um, talk that we had this morning. Um, should we be taking lessons from how public transport is mapped in OSM for um, mapping this kind of feature? You know, I think the end goal is to have uh, if I want to get from A to B, I want to say, okay, I can cycle, I can take the, I can go by foot, and I, I want to have all those different options available to me as a human, um, and I, I want the computer to do the job of comparing all the different modes uh, and 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 combine them if 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 that's uh, possible. I realize that that is a a tough problem for for a routing engine. Um, the the difference I to to go back to to your question the, the difference I see between um, between public transport and um, just moving infrastructure it tends to be very short um, tends to be free or very cheap uh, so cheap that it's you know thirty five cents uh, I don't think you can buy anything else for thirty five cents in that city. Um, Okay. And it tends to be really important for pedestrians. You cannot uh, be a pedestrian in, in some of those places if you do not understand those uh, pieces of infrastructure. You can live a perfectly happy life without ever taking the bus. Uh, you cannot uh, succeed as a pedestrian if, if you never take those pieces of infrastructure. Sure, sure. Okay, that that's actually brings to mind um, so the first thing you mentioned was ferries. And um, I think. I've got noted down here that you had uh, 20,219 ferries. Uh, I've, I've looked at quite a lot of them um, doing the routing for um, cycle.favel, and I'd guess probably 19,000 of them could be mapped better. Uh, and the, the two things that I see are really common um, that would be a good way of improving ferry mapping. Um, one is uh, one is just a plain mistake, which is very often the ferry terminals aren't connected to nearby roads, or they are connected, but the access tags are wrong. So it's kind of quite often I'll see, for example, a, um, a ferry terminal which is connected to the nearest road by highway equals service, service equals driveway. Now, I don't route down driveways because yeah. it's usually someone's driveway. Uh, so, you know, they, they do need the access tags. But something I've started doing um, with cycle travel, and I sort of encourage other people to do it, is um, breaking out the URL tags or the website tags on ferries. 
because usually when you see that your route takes you over a ferry, you want to know, well, is the ferry running today? Uh, is it going to cost me a load of money? Uh, I don't want to rock up to the ferry and find that it only runs on Saturdays in the summer months, which some do. So actually putting the, ta uh, the website of the ferry operator in there, which the routing uh, engine can then surface, mm -hmm. is a really good way for people to get around this problem that um, sometimes the ferry doesn't really fit in your route. And I think we can see uh, um, um, a virtual circle of, of uh, engines understanding uh, the bits of infrastructure that are not too complicated to understand and uh, tagging getting better. Uh, I, you, some, some of those things I've seen, you could, it would be hard to root over them and you could easily uh, make them routable. Um, it's um, it's hard to debug because you don't have anything that navigates over it. So you think you yeah. right. There's no more questions. Thank you very much.